So hi everyone, uh, my name is Ami, and as Geraldine mentioned, I was working uh, in the last more than a year on RNA tools in the JTK. Um, so in this talk, Geraldine already gave you an overview of, of the general DNA pipeline and the RNA pipeline and some of the differences be between them. And during the day you will hear, whenever we will talk about the tool, if there is a, a difference between the RNA pipeline and the DNA, the uh, speaker will point out what are the right thing to do if you have RNA data. In this specific session, I will talk more about two tools that are uh, the main differences between the pipelines. So this is why we put them in a separate uh, talk. So, uh, so why do we want to do variant calling on RNA? So there's many reasons. The first two motivations that we started to work with was for uh, RNA editing events that happened after you have the DNA and then in the RNA you see some mutations that are not existing in the DNA because there are some biological mechanism to uh, uh, introduce new mutation into the, into the RNA. So this is one of the things that we wanted to achieve by having uh, RNA variant calling pipeline. And the other one is in order to allow us to do a least specific expression. So we know that in RNA, again, sometimes even if you see a heterozygous site in the DNA, which is 50-50, uh, have a balanced allele in the RNA sometimes is different, so it is important to be able to call such things uh, directly from the RNA. So this is the main two motivation, but there is other reasons that people want to do variant calling on RNA data. Um, so Jardin already sh already show you this slide. So again, the RNA best practices pipeline for variant calling is very similar to the to the DNA one. We have uh, data processing, which how to clean the data before the variant calling, then we have the variant calling and the filtering. My uh, two tools that I'm going to speak here are actually in this section, which is um, the data clean, the cleaning, and then in the variant calling, whoever will talk about the haplotype code will say what are the differences, and again, in the variant filtration, we are using hard filter instead of using VQSR, and whoever, I think Bernd Friend is, will talk about it when he will uh, uh, talk about variant filtration. So the first main change, as Matt already mentioned, that instead of using BWA, we are using STAR as our main aligner. And um, uh, the motivation for that is because RNA is different from DNA in the sense that there is splicing events. So if we have a read coming from DNA data, we expect that if we map it, it will be continuous on the reference genome. So it's slightly easier problem than in RNA. In RNA, since one read might span two different exons with an intron between them, so one read can actually have one part that belongs to one place in the reference genome, and the second part belongs to a different place in the genome. Of course, it can be even more than that if you have long read. So this is harder problem for the aligner. So BWA mem does not know how to deal with that. It actually does, but it does not know how to, to output it in a very uh, easy way in the output of BWA. So we needed to go and find a different aligner. So one of the first things that we did uh, when we started to think about processing RNA was to try to evaluate the different aligners that exist. We try bow tie or top hat, which is uh, based on top on bow tie, uh, and we tried different aligner. And at the end, we actually uh, choose, chose the star aligner. So it was um, more accurate, and it worked much faster, and we achieved better results with all the different parameters, not just for variant calling, but we evaluated also for other um, application of RNA, like um, gene expression analysis, um, fusion events, and other. And for all the different applications that we tried, star was either better or as good as other aligners. So at the end, we decided to, to uh, recommend STAR. It was not the regular STAR, not just taking STAR and running it, run it, it runs a um, regular command. We did, when we tried that, just taking STAR as it is and running, it, we, we got many false positive. And then we, can, uh, we, we saw that there is maybe an, an option to use a different protocol that used two pass uh, star, it running it, instead of running it twi once, it running it twice. The first one is identify, it's doing the alignment, but also identify the splice junction events. 
And then you can use this output of spike junction events in order to guide the second round of alignment and to get a better alignment, a refined alignment, because you already identify most of the supply junction in the first pass. So this is the reason that we recommend this two uh, pass approach and not just using star in one pass approach. Um, it does require more time, but it's still much faster than the other aligners. And uh, talking with Alex, which is a developer of star, I know that if you get the uh, up-to-date version, I think this process is already built in into the uh, new version of star. We currently use it a slightly older version of star, but I think that either it already uh, exists or it will be uh, available very soon that with the regular star uh, version that you um, download from, from the star uh, aligner site, you will get the option to run it very easily. Even now, it's not very complicated. And I won't go into the details what is the exact command to run star, but it is uh, on our documentation online. So if you want to run star in this protocol, just go to the RNA uh, documentation, best practices pipeline, and you will have this, the exact command line there. So this is about the aligner. So this is why we are not using BWM, but we use, choose a, a different aligner. Currently, at the broad pipeline, if for, for everyone like that one, are wondering what is the genomic platform or what the Picard team is running as, as the main uh, RNA aligner, it's still an old top head aligner, but there is a plan to switch to production uh, to have a star two pass aligner as a production pipeline at the broad. Um, okay, so the second uh, main difference is this tool, which we call it uh, split and trim, and I will explain it. It does not exist in the DNA at all because there is no need for that, but in the RNA, there is a need for, for a new tool, and I will explain why we need that. So again, we already saw this uh, cartoon figure of the mapping and aligning the, the RNA reads. So if we look here, we see that, okay, so this part is coming from this region, this part is coming from this region, and the way to represent it in the cigar string is to have these ends uh, in the middle of the cigar string. So in this case, there is 10 matches here, three matches here, and in the middle there is a gap of n bases, so it will be representing the n10. In this case, uh, the JTK was not designed to deal with these ends, because in DNA data we don't have these ends in the cigar string. So some of the tool will fail and give you an error method. Some of the tool will be able to work with the end, but not guaranteed to give you the correct uh, answer that you expect. So the first thing that we had to do in order to be able to run the other JTK uh, tools were somehow to, to get rid of this end or either to change all the JTK tools to know what to do with them or to get rid of them. So we chose uh, to get rid of the end in the beginning of the process of the variant calling processes and this is why we have the new tool. So this is one reason and the other reason that I will also show in the next slide with a real IGV screenshot that if this end is very short, for example, like three bases, or in this case is one basis or four bases, in many cases, even the best aligner won't be able to splice it and say, oh, this part come from one exon and this come from another exon. It will probably find this exon and this will be overhang into the intronic region. So this is another phenomenon that you, if you use um, RNA liners, for most of the reads, like the reads like that, they will be able to split it between two exons, but if the overhang is very short, it will just rem remain there and will be overhang into the intronic regions, which cause a problem, as you can see in this IGV screenshot. Uh, so why it's cause a problem? Of course, because it's belong to a different exon, we don't expect it to be matched to this intronic region. And in this case, there will be mismatches but they will all agree between them because all this overhang actually belong to a different part of the genome. And it will be uh, called by the variant caller as a SNP, both here and here. So this is a major error mode that caused many false positive in, in the variant calling of RNA because of this short overhang. So the tool called split and trim do both things. First of all, it's get rid of this end. So we take one read, it splices to two 
different reads. It keeps the names and just add suffix so you, it is easy if you need it, it is at the end of the process to combine them back to one read. But in our pipeline, we don't really need to combine them at any point back to one read. So it splice them, get rid of the ends, and it's also trim the overhangs that are noisy in order to reduce the noise and make sure that we are not called this as a false positive event. Um, so I told that it's split, uh, it keeps the grouping information, it's trim. Uh, currently, you have to tell it, oh, allow NCGAS string because all the JTK tools, as I told you, are not expect to see N in the CGAS string, as, so usually they just throw an error. But if you use the dash U, which is unsafe, allow NCGAS string, it tells it the tool take into account the N, and of course this tool should take into account the N because it need to process them. So it, you need to add that to the command line, and I will show the command line in the next slide. Um, when we run this tool, since it's the first JTK tool that we are running in the pipeline, we're also running a read filter called reassign one mapping quality. Reassign map one mapping quality take reads that have a mapping quality of 255 and change them to 60. 255, it's a uh, mapping quality that some of the RNA liners use to say that it was uniquely mapped, but it's not defined in the, so JTK does not know how to process 255 because it's like specific integer that was chosen by the RNA liners to, to, to represent the uniquely mapped. So instead we are using 60, which is the, the higher mapping quality that we allow in the JTK scheme. So uh, you can do it with any tool. A, any JTK tool can run this read filter because it's a read filter, it's not part of the tool. But since this is the first JTK tool that is in the pipeline, we, we are also doing that at that step. So let's see how the command line look like. So, um, so again, you're using the JTK jar, you choose the tool, so dash T with the tool, split and trim and cigar reads. Uh, you use the reference, you use the input, which is the original band farm that has reads with and cigar string. You say what is the output, in this case, it's a, again, it's a band file, but it won't have, the, the reads will be uh, split and it was, you won't have the overhangs. Uh, you have to say that you want to process the end cigar string because this is what we want to do with this tool. Again, we are using this read filter in order to change mapping quality 255 to 60. So you say uh, reassigning mapping quality from 255 to reassigning mapping quality to 60. And this is a way that um, you run the tool. Um, so again, just to uh, repeat on the general processing of uh, RNA. So you start with the RNA, you run the mapper, in this case you run the two pass star, you run the mark duplication that Matt, uh, Matt described, then you run the uh, tool to split and, and trim the reads. The next steps are the same in, as in the DNA uh, process, which is indel realignment, best recalibration, and then you go to the variant discovery, you use the haplotype color, but in slightly different mode, and um, whoever gives a talk about haplotype color will mention that. And then you do the filtering. Again, you don't use the VQSR, but you currently use hard filter. It's not because VQSR won't work, but we don't have enough experience with a lot of RNA data in order to have a recommendation what should be the exact uh, use of VQSR. So uh, in the future, I assume that as we see more and more uh, RNA data, we will have also a better recommendation for the variant filtration. Um, there is a, uh, two docs. There is, first of all, you can go and see the best practices pipeline in the, in the JTK forum, and there is a specific uh, article or, or docs that describe all the best practices and actually giving you the specific command line for, for the, uh, that are specific to RNA and different from DNA. If you have any questions, I will be happy to answer, yeah. I was wondering if you or did you try to align to a transcriptome reference instead of a genomic reference? So the question was if we try to align to transcriptome uh, reference instead of uh, genomic reference. So currently, no, we didn't do that. Uh, we did evaluate it a little bit at the beginning, and um, it, it seems that as a first pass, 
we want to first align to reference. It's both because it gave us good result, but also because most of the thinking that we want to develop in the, in the future will be, instead of having just processing the RNA, take both RNA and DNA together and process them in order to get better. For, for example, for variant calling, it is like we, we, are, we have, like, we want in the future to, to process both of them together and get more accurate results because you have both the RNA and DNA. So this is why we choose to align currently to the reference uh, genome and not to transcriptome. Um, there is some work that uh, Brian Haas group uh, did, and, and they are more in the world of transcriptome, and I'm not sure if they got into the conclusion or if it's ongoing work, but um, yeah, there is, it, it makes sense to, to compare, at least to compare and see what you get, but um, currently since we want to include the DNA at some point for most of the tools, uh, we, we want to start with the uh, aligning to the reference genome. Yes. Um, so for the PCR duplicates, the reads will still look the same. Although it's like, it might be a read that spent different exons, so it's not that it's continuous one, but if it's a, a PCR duplicate, the read will be exactly the same read and it will spend the same exon. So the mark duplicates is still the same process. For some application of RNA, you don't want to mark duplicates. For example, if you want gene expression, sometimes you do want uh, uh, to take into account duplicates because you are not sure if they are coming, it's, if it's a PCR duplicate or real biological duplicates. So in some, in some pipelines, people are just not using mark duplicates. For variant calling, we find that it, you should use it. It's not changing a lot, especially if you have uh, high quality, but you, still for variant calling, you do want to take, like to remove the duplicates. Um, and for little specific expression, for example, uh, and maybe this is a, a, a good uh, point to mention that we have the variant calling pipeline, but we're also working on different RNA tools. We try to build uh, a package of different RNA tools. So one, so one of the new tools that we have, and we just uh, public, uh, submitted it to Nature Method two weeks ago, is a tool for least specific expression. And in this, this case, we actually try to evaluate it both with mark duplicates and without, and see if it make any uh, differences. Does that answer your question? Yes, so the question was, are we expect to, to be able to, to compare DNA and call, variant calling and RNA variant calling in the same pipeline? Yes, so we actually already had uh, that with our collaborator on, on RNA editing events. This is, for example, an ideal scenario where you want to compare the RNA variant calling in the DNA. So currently we still run it like a separate variant calling on the DNA and RNA and compare, but uh, we did play a little bit with running it in, on the same pipeline. We didn't have time yet to, to publish it, but we presented a poster in, in, a, in a conference like probably six months ago already uh, with some result on that. Yeah, but we definitely want to do it both for, in order to get the differences between them, but also to get more accurate calls because you have two different set data sets and you can use each one to make the other one more accurate. Any other questions?